your heart to your lover. Yeah. From your heart to your lover. Yeah. From your spirit to your father. Oh, intentionally. They shall be filled, they shall be filled. Our Father is not a scammer. Our lover is not a scammer. If we are thirsty, we will be filled. My God. Ready for your life to change? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you are intentional, Lord. Because he is a God that answers prayer. I'm not wasting time. Call it.
it is rising. They shall be filled, they shall be filled. Our Father is not a scammer. Our lover is not a scammer. If we are thirsty, we will be filled. My God. ready for your lives to change? Make sure you are intentional, Lord.
going to thank him because he is a God that answers prayer. It is rising. They shall be filled, they shall be filled. Our Father is not a scammer. Our lover is not a scammer. If we are thirsty, we will be filled. My God. ready for your life to change? Make sure you are intentional, Lord.
to thank him because he is a God that answers prayer. is rising. They shall be filled, they shall be filled. Our Father is not a scammer. Our lover is not a scammer. If we are thirsty, we will be filled. My God. ready for your lives to change? Make sure you are intentional, Lord.
Good morning to you all. I want us to begin to lift up our voice and call upon the name of the Lord in a time and in a season like this. Lift up your voice and thank the Lord for granting us the grace and the time to hear his word. Shall we pray? Father, Lord God Almighty, we give thanks and we give praise. We thank you for allowing us, Lord God Almighty, to this new time, this season, Lord God Almighty. In this gate of time, Lord God Almighty, we give thanks and we give you praise. We ask you to Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We exalt your name. We give you praise for this morning. Spirit of the living God, I ask that you breathe fresh upon us and minister grace unto our hearts that will never be the same. Take the cobwebs out of our eyes. Take the scales out of our eyes. Let our eyes be open. Let the mysteries of the kingdom be revealed unto us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to continue from where I left off last week. But I also want today's message to stand on its own. 
So I say stand alone cereal. And so today's message is entitled Understanding the Year 5785. Understanding the Year 5785. Understanding the year five seven eight five. Understanding the year five seven eight five. Now I took my time to explain the mystery of the moon and why God created the moon, why God created the sun, why God created the constellations, and why it's important to understand them. And I said, you are not supposed to want to worship them. You're supposed to want understand them. And I ended by showing you that the prophet Daniel understood them, but he did not worship them. That it is by that understanding that he refused to obey the decree that said that um, nobody should pray for 30 days. And I said, because Daniel understood that the moon goes through the 12 constellations that mark the 12 months of the year. And the moon travels two days, eight hours in each constellation in the period of 30 days, which means the astrologers, the magicians, and the prognosticators understood that if Daniel does not pray for 30 days, that 30 days can be used to mark a whole year since the moon travels through all 12 constellations within 30 days. The sun travels through within 12 months. It takes the sun 365 days to do that, but it takes the moon 30 days. And so Daniel being a prophet and having the spirit of God and working with the watchers. The watchers are angels that mark times and seasons. The watchers would have taught Daniel what to do and we would have made it known to him the significance of not praying for 30 days. And Daniel opened his window and began to pray. And because Daniel prayed, they threw him into the garden of the, the den of the lions. Because they wanted to destroy Daniel. And if Daniel was destroyed, then the magicians will have a failed day. But Daniel was always 10 times more than the astrologers and the magicians. And I said, the problem with our generation is we don't want to be 10 times more than the astrologers and the magicians. We want to do confession. I am 10 times more than the astrologers and the magicians. I am 10 times more than the astrologers and the magicians. Well, confession is not the same as revelation. So after you've confessed that you are 10 times more than the astrologers and the magicians. But you don't understand the ways of God. You cannot recognize when the watchers want to teach you things. You don't understand what to do. In time and in seasons, you will live in blindness. And so, it is very important to understand these things especially in the times in which we are living now. And I went through 
Genesis. And I went through the time of Noah. And I showed that they did have a calendar. And then I also showed how when Noah came out of the ark, and the first thing Noah did was what? Well, he raised an altar. And the Bible says his sacrifice was a sweet smelling in the nostrils of God. And I asked the question, was God hungry for barbecue? Was there a lack of food in heaven that he was so excited about the sacrifice? Absolutely not. But I did not go further. And when we go further, we will find out that after the sacrifice of Noah, Noah proceeded to do something else. And I showed in scripture that all the interactions of God and Noah and the flood were all around new moons and what? And full moons. And then I asked the question, why will God choose new moons and full moons for his acts? And I went to Exodus and I showed that the Passover happened on the full moon. And I showed in the New Testament that Jesus died at Passover. And the sun and the moon and the stars refused to shine. They all bowed down to the greater light. I also took my time to explain the significance of that. Because there was darkness in the whole world when Jesus hung on the cross. There was a solar horde. There was a solar eclipse. And God chooses these defined moments to do his works on earth because he created the sun, the moon, and the stars for time and for seasons. And I said, our calendar is based on the fact that the earth is moving, the sun is moving, and the moon is moving. And then I deliberately made you to understand there are not only 12 constellations because I don't want somebody to listen to these messages and quote me out of context. I'm quite aware that there are 88 constellations. I have a science background, so I understand science. Then I pointed out the study of the, of the stars. In science, when you say stars, it's not only twinkle, twinkle stars. The stars is inclusive of the sun, the moon, the twinkle, twinkle stars, as you know it, the meteors, the asteroids. All of them are called stars. And I said, the group of stars that marks the man are called constellations. And there are 88 of them. But the sun and the moon only travels through 12. And it is their traveling through those 12 that give us 12 months of war of the year. That's why we have 12 months of the year and not 15 months in the year. And then I pointed out that the world followed a moon calendar until Pope Gregory came and insisted that the world will not follow the moon calendar anymore, but they will follow his calendar, which was based on the sun. And it was a veil that was cast upon the world because with the sun calendar, you're always behind. But if you look around, even in traditional religions, 
and all of that, they all still follow what? The moon calendar. Even the witches. Have you ever wondered why Halloween comes in October? It comes immediately after the Feast of Tabernacles. They, they know what they are doing. But they've cast a veil on you to accept that. It's October, November, December. And I took my time and said, the witchcraft is deep. And the saying is that when you go back to linguistics, Ut, August, signifies what number? Eight. I said um, September signifies what number? We are told September is what number? What month is September? The ninth month. But in Latin languages, it's seven. We are told October is the tenth number, the tenth month. But oct is ten, octagon. But we are told is what well, the tenth. The octagon is eighth. The eighth. October is what? But octagon is eighth. Eight-sided figure. Now somebody went and decided to do a research on what I, what I said. He found out and got more details concerning it and realized that this is a deep witchcraft. That's what goes on. So December, Decagon. It's meant to be a 10th month, but the veil has been cast on the rest of the world that December is the 12th month. And for some strange reasons, we've all accepted it so. No. It's meant to be the 9th, but we are told and we've been deceived is the 11th. So you are always behind the times. But the occult groups understand the life is not controlled by the sun. It's controlled by what? The moon. Because the sun is a he and the moon is a she. Okay, let me start from there. Because by this time, somebody is scratching his head and says, where is that in the Bible that the sun is a he and the moon is a she? You didn't show us scripture last time. So I want you to open your Bible to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 13. Isaiah Isaiah chapter 13, and I wanted to read verse 10. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 10. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. Now, this is Isaiah the prophet prophesying about the second coming of Christ. Isaiah saw the second coming of Christ and said, for Christ to come, the sun, the moon, and the stars, they, they, won't give, they won't shine. When you go to Matthew 24, Jesus prophesied that before the second coming of Christ, the sun and the moon and the stars will not shine. The sun, the sun will be darkened, the moon shall be darkened, and the stars will be darkened, and the Son of Man shall come in the clouds. Everything is in the Bible. The problem is, there are very few Christians that are studying the Bible. The rest are quoting scriptures out of context and not studying it for themselves. And I want to encourage every Christian, search the scriptures, for in them ye have what? Eternal life. The mysteries of eternal life is in the word. And the Bible says the mystery of eternal life is inside of you. That touch of eternal life does not come alive when you don't study the word of God. 
most of us like the fact that somebody pours to us. That's good. But when somebody pours to you, go back and search the scriptures for yourself. Because when you find it yourself, nobody can take it away from you. Nobody can take it away from you. I want you to read the scripture again. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 10. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. Now read slowly because I want to point something out. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth. Pause. The sun will be darkened in his going forth. And we're back at primary school doing grammar. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth. You will notice a male pronoun is used for what? For the sun. Isaiah the prophet is not just making noise. He's deliberately giving us a revelation about the attitude of the sun. The sun is a he. Notice that the sun has light. The sun is a giver of light. The moon does not have light. The moon is a receiver of light. A man is a seed giver. The, the, a woman is a seed receiver. And when the sun gives light, let me down a little bit. Follow me. When the sun gives light, when the sun gives light, then the moon receives light, and the moon beams its light back onto the earth. So in a nutshell, what a man gives a woman is what a woman will produce. So if you give a woman trouble, it will give you double wahala, double trouble. Do you understand? Because a woman is a seed receiver. What you give to a woman is what it will produce. Now, I showed you the sun is a he. Keep reading. And the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And the moon shall not cause his light, no, her light to shine. So, you will see even in the creation of God, the lights that we see is like a family. The sun is the head of the family. The moon is the mother of the family. And the stars are the children. So when God wanted to give prophecy to Abraham, he, took, he said, Abraham, go outside and look what? Look into the sky. Look into the sky. And Abraham looked into the sky and saw what was in the sky and he was fascinated. I know many of us think that he was counting the stars. Abraham was a prophet. He was a friend of God. He understood the prophetic communication God was giving him. That he will have 12 sons. 12 sons will come out of his bowels. He just didn't know how. So Isaac Gave birth to what? Jacob and who? Esau. And Jacob gave birth to what? Twelve sons. And the twelve sons are marked by twelve constellations. That's what Abraham saw. It's a prophetic language. So nothing is an accident. And when you understand these things in detail, the prophetic will be easy for you. People will not be charging you for prophecy. You will understand things. But what I've come to realize is many of us don't want to learn anything deep. We just want somebody to spoon feed us. That's how somebody can, if somebody guesses wrong and prophecy over your life, you'll be led astray because you don't know who you are. I'm not confused why I was born. You know, I did a study. I wanted to know why I was born. 
Yes, I prayed. Yes, I studied. And I found more by studying. For example, I wondered why, how come I understand the things of the sun, the moon, and the stars. You know what I found? I was born just after midnight. Five minutes after midnight. My mom told me. And then I realized that it was it was the first day of the month. It was a new moon's day. So is it an accident that I end up teaching on new moons? I'm just fulfilling the volume of the book that is written concerning my life. Life is deep. Life is very deep. And so, most of us, we don't like to study. By study, you will come across things that will blow your mind. That will blow your mind. Even when your parents wants your, your whole life is ordered by the Lord. You want to go some way, but God will orchestrate you to go another way. Because he has a plan. When you discover that, you will not live fake life. You will not try to be... Other. Do you know why many people are... Many, many preachers are insecure? Because they don't know who they are. So when they see that this person is jumping, they too start to, uh, to jump. Because they don't understand. They are not called to jump. They are called to do a specific thing. May the Lord give you understanding. Praise the Lord. And that was introduction. Now, if anybody is not scared of darkness, because some of you, I know you are scared of darkness, you don't go out until the sun comes out. But it is good to rise up a great while old before day. If you're close to your door and you can go outside, you look outside, you look up, you will find that a group of stars with a moon gathered in the sky, right on top of your head, like that. If you do this, you'll find them. Now, I was trying to take a picture of it to show you, but there's so much going on there that no matter what picture I take, is not, it doesn't do justice to what is in the sky. It doesn't do justice. But yet still, I think, for demonstration and for understanding, it will be good for me to take um, the picture. And the picture I will show you is one third of what is happening. So you will bear with me and take it as such. But if you've been paying attention for years now of the things I try by God's grace to teach, you will notice I've just taken a picture from a science app. Nothing to be scared of. It is science. It's just that I understand beyond the science. And um, I just want to show you the year coming that you will not walk alone. Amen? I said you will not walk alone. You will not walk alone. And let me send it to my technical chief. He will make it happen for me. I, I own you $1 million. According to Natalie, I must pay you $1 million. Now, so much is going on. Now, for years, I have studied and I have paid attention. I've done due diligence. This morning, I'm trying to slow down so that everybody will understand me. And for year, every year, I will notice around this time 
the stars will gather in the sky and it's like a round table what conference it's like a round table conference and i still have copies of years past that i took to show what is happening there are a group of stars that will gather now when they gather they carry a prophetic message and they gather in the sky and they bring a message out and i wanted to know why are they, why have they gathered why have all of them cluttered themselves and why should they clutter themselves just before the hebrew calendar the silver calendar and so the holy spirit said find out the meanings of their names and so i found out the meanings of their names I'm going to send another picture that will make it simple because it came to me that some of us ran away from just geographic class and so things in the skies can sometimes confuse you so let me come, come down to your level because I want you to understand and so I will show both slides so that um, everybody will understand what I'm talking about now in every year Put the first slide on the screen, Orion. Now, I want you to open your microphone and uh, put your hand upon your head. I will explain why later. Put your hand upon your head and say, Lord, let your hand be upon me. Let the, the revelations of heaven come unto me. Put your hand, O oh Lord, upon my head. You lay your hands upon my head and make me to understand. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Zende kobra skitele mando pro itende kuzuzali ana mahaba. Put your hand upon my head and make me understand. Zende kobra katana mabe. Le zende kobra skitele mando pro itende kuzuzali ana mahaba. Le zende kobra katana mabe. Le zende kobra skitele mando pro itende kuzuzali ana mahaba. Le zende kobra katana mabe. Le kobra skitele mando pro itende kuzuzali ana mahaba. Le zende kobra katana mabe. Le kobra skitele mando pro itende kuzuzali ana mahaba. Le zende kobra katana mabe. Le kobra skitele mando pro itende kuzuzali ana mahaba. Le zende kobra katana mabe. Le kobra skitele mando pro itende kuzuzali ana mahaba. I pray, release understanding, Holy Spirit, make it real to us in the name of Jesus. And let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Stay with me. Don't worry. I will show you so many scriptures, but I want you to have an understanding that prophecy is written in the heavens. Now, before I explain the imagery, anybody have ever seen the picture of the menorah? Find the picture of the menorah. Uh, things are just coming to me fast. Don't worry. The Lord will give you grace. Find a, the picture of the menorah. I just want to be practical to bring understanding. Amen? Now, I want you to find 
the seven branch menorah, not the nine. The seven branch menorah, any, any of them. And I want to teach this morning. I don't want to shout. I want to bring understanding. So that we will understand why we do the things we do. And so anybody comes with me to, with questions, instead of answering them, I tell them, go and watch Morning Glory. Because I know some people will never wake up. Unfortunately. Praise the Lord. The menorah. Any picture of the menorah. Thank you. Now, I want you to put the cursor on the first one. Yeah. Put it on the first one. Uh-uh. It's Hebrew, so you must start from the right to the left. In Hebrew language, you don't write from left to the right. You write from right to the left. In Arabic, you write from right to the left. It's in English and European languages, you write from left to right. Now, the first one, there are reasons why there are seven branches. Okay? Prophetically, they represent the seven feasts of the Lord. Now, if you've never heard about the seven feasts of the Lord, um, I wanted to write it down. Is in Leviticus chapter 23. Let's go to scripture. Leviticus chapter 23. I, let's, let's read Bible. Leviticus chapter 23. I want you to read from verse 1. Leviticus chapter 23 from verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord. Concerning the feast of the Lord, not the feast of the Jews. Concerning the feast of the Lord. Now pay attention to your Bible. You will notice that the Lord is emphasized in your Bible. Concerning the feast of the Lord. So the feasts are about the Lord and they are not about the Jews. And last week I pointed out that when you go to the New Testament, specifically John chapter 7, it is called the feast of what? The Jews. Because they removed the Lord from the, from the festival. The Lord was not the center of it anymore. And then I referred you to Isaiah chapter 1, that God told them, away with your feast and your holy convocation, I, your, your oblations and your incense are what? Are an abomination to me because the Lord was not the center of them. And then he admonished them that if they want him to be the center of their feast, then come unto me. Come now and let us what? Reason together. If your sins be as scarlet, they shall be what? White as snow. But the feasts are always about the Lord. The whole chapter of Leviticus chapter 23 talks about the feast of the Lord. The first one. One of the reasons why God told them, I'm giving you a second calendar. And the second calendar must begin, it must be called the month of war. Nisan. The first month, your, your first month shall be the month of Nisan. That, and I showed you that last week in exodus chapter 12 there was a reason for that everything there's a reason for it because the month of nisan is the month where the passover happened and god used it as a new biblical year the reason is it marks the feasts of the lord and who is the lord jesus he is lord he is Lord. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess 
that Jesus Christ is Lord. We sing these songs, but we don't understand them. Now, put the menorah back. Thank you. Everybody say, God bless the technical chief. Now, the first one, there are seven of the feasts. Now, pick up your pen. I want you to write these things down. After that, go and check whether pastor was telling the truth or not. You are allowed to. You are a Berean believer. You are not the hallelujah, amen believer. Everything hallelujah, amen. No, go check the th these things out. The first feast is called the feast of the Passover. The feast of Passover. Okay? The feast of Passover is the first feast. Now, okay, let me go back to Bible. Read Leviticus 23, verse 4 and 5. Leviticus chapter 23, from verse 4. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. In the fourteenth day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Not the Jewish Passover. It is the Lord's Passover. You will notice then in Matthew chapter 26 that it was that time Jesus told the disciples to find a place for the Passover. Then he took the bread and he took the wine. He said, this is what? My body and this is my blood. This is what? The new covenant. Then he instituted the last um, the pass the the Lord's Supper based on the Passover, on the foundation of the Passover. And then he died at that time. That's why he's called the Passover Lamb, the Lamb of God. Behold, the Lamb of God that take away what? The sin of the world. You cannot put the Old Testament aside and understand the New Testament. Are you with me? So the first feast is called the Feast of Passover. Now, read Leviticus chapter 23, verse 6. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 6. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. Now, God then told them that when you celebrate the Passover in the evening, the following day is a different feast. The second feast in God's calendar is called the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. Now, why is it called the Feast of the Unleavened Bread? Because Jesus is the bread of life. He's the living bread. And the bread is made without yeast. Now, when bread is made without yeast, it's called unleavened. Living is yeast. Now, the reason why the bread is made without yeast is because Jesus lived all his life on earth without sin. And yeast, living, represents sin prophetically. And the reason why they must celebrate it for seven days is because seven is the number of perfection. Are you getting the picture? So, point to the second light on the menorah. The first light is Passover. The second one is the feast of what? Unleaving what? Unleaving bread. Now, when on your own, I wanted to go and study Leviticus 20, so because of time, so I can talk about the rest. The third one is called the Feast of First Fruit. Point to the third one. Now, the Feast of First Fruit is celebrated after the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And guess what time Jesus resurrected? The, the first fruit. 
he resurrected as the first fruit. Why first fruit? Because he's the one, he's except a corn of wheat will fall into the ground and die. It abides alone. But if he falls into the ground and die, it does what? It bringeth forth much fruit. He is the seed of God. The seed of the woman who went into the ground, who was buried. And then on the third day, what? Rose up again. See, the way they count days is not the way we count days. We count days like 12 hours, we say it's a day. No. They count the whole 24 hours. That's how we know. Jesus did not die on a Friday and resurrected on a Sunday. Because if he died on a Friday and resurrected on a Sunday, he, it cannot be three days and three nights. Are you getting me? It cannot be three days and three nights if you died on Friday and resurrected on Sunday. Churchism is what is killing the church. Now that's for another day. Now, the fourth feast is the feast of Shavuot. Now the feast of Shavuot is what is called the feast of Pentecost. Hello? Pentecost. Now point to the fourth one. The fourth one is the middle one. Now, why? It's the middle one of partition. Remember when Jesus died on the cross, the, the, the veil was what? Was torn into two because it opened access. Come into the presence of the Lord with what? With boldness because the veil had been torn. Now, why is it called Pentecost? Pente representing 50. Why? Now we call ourselves Pentecostals, Pentecostals, but we don't understand what we are talking about. It's called Pentecost because it's exactly 50 days after Passover. It's 50 days after he shed his blood on the cross. If you, if you, do, if you are understanding what I'm talking about, type in the chat and type on YouTube and say, Pastor, I understand now. I want you to understand. I'm not here to display knowledge. I want to impart knowledge. Amen? So, on the day of Pentecost, God did not choose any other day. He chose a feast day because it is the feast of the Lord to bring, to send the Holy Ghost. It is expedient for me to go away for if I do not go away, the comforter will not come. The Holy Ghost will not come. But I will send another, the comforter unto you, who will teach you all things. Do you know that when God wanted to give the Ten Commandments to Moses, he gave the Ten Commandments to Moses on the day of Pentecost. I have tracked the history. I have studied it. It's in Exodus chapter 19. It was the time of the Pentecost. It was 50 days. So how do you know? Because it was 50 days after Passover. That he gathered the Jews and manifested to them. And the Jews were scared when they saw the power of God. And said, Moses, you go and listen. Say, but I, God said, but I want to make you a kingdom of priests and what? A kingdom of priests. You, all of you will become priests unto me. And they didn't want. That's why God chose the tribe. Levites to become the priesthood tribe because the nation rejected being what? Priest. So in the New Testament, God then comes and through the apostles opens our eyes and said, do you not understand? Ye are a royal horn, priesthood, a holy nation and a peculiar people. Every child of God is a priest. That's why certain things are not expedient for you to do. You are a priest. Whether you've been ordained or not, you are a priest unto the Lord. So you must behave as such. Dress as such. Talk as such. You are a priest. Many Christians don't know who they are. And then when Peter wrote the letter to the church concerning that, Jesus knew that many years after, people will say that was Peter's idea. So he himself says so. Now let's go to what Jesus said. Go to Revelation chapter 1, 
verse 4 to 6. Read Revelation chapter 1, verse 4 to 6. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and from Jesus Christ so if you don't believe me listen to what Jesus is about to say and from Jesus Christ yes who is the faithful witness who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of why the dead. is he called a faithful witness because he's the Passover lamb He's a faithful witness. Yes. And the first begotten of the dead. He's the first begotten of the dead. I just told you that he's the seed of the woman that resurrected. He's the first begotten of the dead. That's why when a child of God dies, he has hope he will resurrect again. Death is not the end. Because resurrection lives in you. That's why Jesus said in the book of John, I am the resurrection and the life. When you get born again, resurrection and life live inside you. If resurrection is inside you, you cannot die. Therefore, the believers in the early church understood that death has no power over them. Death was a transport. Death was transit. Because resurrection life lives inside you. The same life that rose up Jesus from the dead is the same life that is inside of you. You can't die. That's why to make fun of death, Paul and the others began to write and say, some among us are asleep. They are not dead because a living person can sleep. A living person cannot die. Resurrection life lives inside them. Prophetically, they knew that if you kill them, they're still alive. I am a dead man. You cannot arrest a dead man. A brother who wrote that song, he got it right. You cannot arrest a dead man. He's dead. He's alive. In another life, eternal life lives inside of you. You are life. Eternal life is not experience when you die. It's already inside of you. Resurrection and life is inside of you. Oh God help your church. Keep reading. And the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth. The prince of the kings of the earth. So he's introducing himself that I am royalty. And because I have royal delegation and royal authority, I'm now going to give you delegated authority. Keep reading. Unto him that loved us. He loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave his word. His only begotten son. What manner of love is this? That the father has bestowed one upon us. That we too should be called the children of God. First John chapter 3 verse 1. Brethren. It has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. That's how it's written in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. These are depths that if a believer understands that he cannot be depressed. Keep reading. And washed us from our sins in his own blood. He washed us from our sins in his own blood. What is he saying? At Passover, I am the lamp of God that was sacrificed. I died without sin. And on the third day, I resurrected. And so when I resurrected and you exercise faith in me, I put my life, the resurrection life was in you. In him is life. Greater is he that is in you than he that is what? In the world. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout glory. This is the point you shout glory. Not the one that we make noise just without understanding what we are shouting about. Now keep reading. And have made us kings and priests unto God and his father. He did not ask for your opinion. 
But pastor, I don't feel like a king. He, that's why he did not ask for your opinion. Because some of you are too religious. If you are asked, do you want to be a king? No, I just want to be a humble servant. I don't want to be a king. He didn't ask for your opinion. He made you a king and a priest. Why? Keep reading. Unto God and his father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Unto his father, for his father's will. He, he made me and made you to be a king and a priest. You don't need a program for somebody to tell you that you are the king's daughter. You know, people get excited about little things. You are a king. You are not just the king's daughter. You are a priest. Because your brother is the high priest. Information is different from revelation. I can, I can encourage you to rise up. You are the daughter of the king. And you rise up. Dress up like a king. And then I'll graduate you and all of that. And you are excited. But you know I can do all of that. If you don't catch this revelation, every year you want to be graduated again because you feel it is a graduation that will change you. It's not the graduation. The graduation is good. It's to, it's to help you to understand who you are in Christ. But that's not enough because when problems come, the graduation cannot help you. It is the word of God, the word, the word, the word that will help you. That's why people go through programs, but the program does not go through them. The program does not go through. I'm not criticizing the program. Don't get me wrong. What I'm saying is, the program is to give you a start. The start, after the start, you need to know who you are by the word, by the word. Because you can wear the crown. And after wearing the crown, you can still talk like you are not a priest. You are not like a, a royalty. Are you with me? That's what Jesus did for us. He made us kings and priests. Go back to the menorah. Now, so we are in the middle, right? So God in his infinite wisdom and in his sovereignty used the middle, the middle branch. If it's, this is a tree, I will say it's what? Is the is the midrib or the, the if, if this is a leaf, I'll say it's a midrib. If it's a tree, I'll say it's a stem, right? Because the middle one holds the rest. Okay? Now the middle one gave birth to what we know as the church. Because it's the, on the day of Pentecost, three thousand souls were what were saved, and the door was then open. For the Gentile world to come in. Are you catching the revelation and the, and the ways of God? Now, point to the next one. Now, the church is born. Me and you are part of the church. We are part of the church age. What's the next activity in God's calendar? It's called the Feast of Trumpets. Now go to First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. I wanted to read from verse 14. First Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, yes, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus uh -huh. will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. Yes. That we which are alive and remain uh -huh. unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Yes. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. Now, the Lord himself shall descend with the voice of the archangel, that means there will be a preceding archangel that will blow the trumpet. Pa -pa -pa, pa -pa -pa, pa -pa -pa. Do you now understand why Rosh Hashanah is also called the Feast of what? The Feast of Trumpets. 
the blowing of the shofars is to make announcement the king is coming the king is coming he's already come the first time he's coming the second time so the second coming of christ is not a figment of imagination it's always been in the plan of god so when i put the menorah down i'm not trying to be jewish i'm trying to be prophetic because i understand the ways of god are you getting me now point to the next one now the next one is called the feast of the day of atonement why because after the feast of the trumpets the day of atonement is a 24 hour day where the jews will weep and wail and ask god to forgive them and to send down the messiah reminiscent of what will happen when they realize that their messiah is jesus and the antichrist is trying to what force them to deny god it is at that time they will remember jesus prophesied and say oh jerusalem jerusalem i had wanted to gather you as chicks but that had not wanted your house was left unto you desolate because you did not know the time of your, your visitation Let, let's go to the scripture because not everybody knows is in the bible go to matthew chapter 23 the last three verses very prophetic matthew chapter 23 from verse 37 oh jerusalem jerusalem thou that killest the prophet pause now he says jerusalem how many times twice in hebrew when a jewish man i hope you know jesus is jewish those of you that hate jews <laughs> <laughs> that's a word to you jesus is jewish your lord was born as a jew okay your bible has foundations in jew your promises the ones you claim from old testament every time they are all about a jewish messiah so wake up to that fact amen now I was just by the way read oh jerusalem jerusalem now he says jerusalem twice because as a prophet when a prophet repeats something twice what he's trying to say is pay detailed attention to what i'm about to what to tell you pay detailed attention to what i'm about to tell you that's why when you read the gospel, especially the gospel according to John, he will say, verily, verily, I say unto you. If you write that in Microsoft Word, they will tell you it is a repeated word, right? But it's, a, it's deliberate, it's intentional to get your attention. So he say, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Now remember, in prophecy, in the mouth of two or three word witnesses, a thing shall be established so he's prophesying jesus is he's not teaching he's prophesying pay attention to his prophecy read thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee how often would i have gathered thy children together even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings and ye would not behold your house is left unto you desolate for I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. You will not see me henceforth, henceforth, until you say, Blessed is he that come what? In the name of the Lord. Now, what is prophesying? Zechariah the prophet saw it and prophesied it, but I don't have time to go there. It's in Zechariah chapter 12 that's for your homework it said the house of david shall wail and the house of nathan shall wail and the house of shemir shall wail and they shall say when they see whom they have pierced prophecy is deep when you understand it may you receive understanding now 
We are at the day of what? Atonement. Now, in the midst of the tribulation, the, the eyes of the Jews shall be open because they are blinded to the fact that Jesus is their Messiah. But their eyes will be open and they will know many Jews shall come to the faith and many Arabs too. It is during the time of the tribulation that both Arab and Jews will come in vast numbers because they will realize Muhammad is not the solution. Moses is not the solution. The answer is the Messiah, Christ Jesus. And they will come in droves. The greatest revival will happen in the time of the tribulation. Say, so how do you know that? Go and read Revelation chapter 7. A great multitude shall come in. I don't have time to go into that side of prophecy. But, that's the time of the day of atonement. Now the last one, the last branch is called what? The feast of what? Tabernacles. Now, the day of atonement is so grievous that the Jews normally remove the word feast from it. Because it is wailing more than what? Feast. But the feast of tabernacles signifies Jesus coming back to earth to establish his kingdom on earth for a thousand years. That's what the Bible calls it the millennial reign. Zechariah prophesied it in Zechariah chapter 14. Um, Zephaniah prophesied it. Um, Revelations speaks about it in Revelation chapter 20. Is that he will rule for a thousand years? Is the ruling for a thousand years that is called millennial world reign? Now, why is it called the Feast of Tabernacles? Because we will tabernacle with the Lord. Write this scripture down, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16. A feast of tabernacles. So the feast is not something, it's not a past event. Neither is it a now event. Neither is it a future event. The feast of the Lord is yesterday, today, and forever. Are you with me? The feast of the Lord is yesterday, today, and what? And forever. It's because people don't study the Bible. Now, the shocking thing is, the first one, the feast of Passover, was the time Jesus died. Then the, the next one, the feast of the unleavened bread. He lived his life without sin. Then the third one, the feast of first fruit. He resurrected at that time. Then the next one, the feast of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost was given to the church. Who is to say? Who is to say that the feast of trumpet will not mark the coming of the Lord? Since every one of them, he fulfilled it. Are you with me? Now, that is why the stars gather every time around this time. They gather around Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets. They too don't know whether it is you will come or not, but they are ready. They are ready. They are prophesying to us that Jesus is what? Is coming backward again. Now, put my pictures on there. Put Orion first. Put the other one first. Because I want us to understand. Now, before I go over, I want you to open up your mic and begin to pray and say, Lord, help me. To number my days. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Ziana Mahanda Broski Tele Cosende Parati Kanama Kosket and the Susanne and the Labranda Leketene Mebe Ramanda Brosco Mosade Yate Connect Emebeleme. Lift up your voice and pray. The Lord help me. Help me to number my days. Don't worry. I will explain what 5785 is. We need to understand the foundations first. Why it is so. Lift up your voice and pray. And ask the Lord to help you. Thank you.
Ask the Lord to help you. Say, Holy Spirit, help me. The number of my days. The Bible says Jesus came to fulfill the volume of the book that is written concerning him. May you understand the volume of the book written concerning him. May you not leave somebody's food. May you live a real life in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Put this slide on the screen again. Now, this is the um, the the secondary school version. Now, this one, everybody can see and understand. Now, what do you see on the screen there? Um, it's from a science website. It's not from witchcraft. Those of you that everything is witchcraft, witchcraft, witchcraft. It's not witchcraft. It is science. It is a science of the atmosphere. It's called astronomy. Astronomy is the study of the stars. It's a science. It's a branch of science. NASA studies them. When you see them taking their space ships and everything into the earth, that's what they go and do. They go and study them. Okay? It is science. And when you read Daniel chapter 1, verse 4, Nebuchadnezzar deliberately wanted children that had understanding what? In science. He meant the understanding of the science of the stars and everything. Amen? Okay. Now what you see there is a picture I took from a science website. I can give you the science website. It's not a secret. It's called fsky.org. fsky.org. That's where I took this picture from. Now, this is from a previous year. So you will notice it's written the winter hot, winter circle, which means that every time winter is about to come, what do they do? They meet for, they, they, they meet. Now, when I saw that, I got fascinated about it. And every year, they invite one of the planets that mark the days. How many days are there in a week? Seven. Do you know the days of the week are named after the seven major planets? They are. It's just that some of them are in Latin. So some of us that don't know anything about Latin cannot tell what it represents. The days, the seven days of, of the week, they are named after the seven planets. So Sunday represents what? Well, the sun. Monday is after what? The moon. Tuesday, I think, is after the planet Mars. Because they, they, they use that in Latin. So that those of you that did not go to posh school will not know that they were named after the seven major planets. But if you go to posh school, they teach you these things. Amen? Saturday, the obvious ones I'm mentioning. Saturday is named after the planet what? The planet Saturn. That's how they name them. Now, when the winter cycle comes, do you know that one of the major planets always is invited for the round table? And I've always wondered why. So I decided to investigate the meanings of the names of the stars. Since the meanings of names gives you a prophetic clue. Now, pay attention as I go through some of the meanings you will find out that there is a star on your screen called procyon point to procyon now when i began to investigate the meaning of the name of the star called procyon procyon is a beautiful bluish star that you can see with your naked eye so your assignment is tomorrow morning the sky is getting bright now you can't see them but tomorrow morning at 4 a.m. in the morning, wake up, go outside your house, and um, with an app, the app will be able to tell you the names of the stars. 
and I've given this app, but some of you wrote the name of the app and never even checked it out. The same way you, you bought a phone and they gave you the small print to sign. You, you went for a loan and you didn't read the small print. May God deliver us in Jesus' name. Now, procedure means the exalted redeemer. You can't make these things up. Procedure means what? The exalted what? Redeemer. Who is the exalted redeemer? Jesus. So, what does that mean? It means, and God bless you, somebody have put it in Zoom chat about the days of the week. Can somebody reproduce it and post it on YouTube also for them so that they will know what I'm talking about? Now, procyon means the exalted word redeemer. So, as a new civil year is about to begin, Rosh Hashanah, what are the stars prophesying? They are reminding us there is no other redeemer. That the only one we must put our faith in in the year 5785 is who? Is who? Jesus, the exalted word redeemer. The stars are prophesying. Now, let me move on to the next one. The next one, you will find a star there called Adebaran. Now, Adebaran means the follower. Follow me as I follow the Father. I hear from whatever thing I hear from the Father, I do. And whatever I tell you, you too sure should do. The follower. Now we must follow the Lord. That's what that star is prophesying. Now, the next star is you will find it's a beautiful star. And it's very bright. It's called, the star is called Sirius. The meaning of Sirius is the prince. Who is the prince? The prince of peace. Jesus again. So, they are all giving us a message. Reminding you, don't enter the year without Jesus being what? Jesus be the center of my what? Of my life. That Jesus is the center of everything. He's the glue that holds everything what? Together. Orion. He said, but pastor, I can't see Orion on the... Um, on the screen. Well, Orion, a group of stars together is called Orion. And that group of stars is when you look on the screen, you will see Beta Girls, Regal. The Beta Girls and Regal form part of Orion. Okay? Now, those is not shown very well, but don't worry. I'll soon show you Orion in his big um, image. Okay? Now, Orion means the coming forth as light. Who is the light of the world? Jesus. And who is coming back again? Jesus. So, what are the stars saying? It's saying that in a time like this, make sure that you search your life. Do you understand why it is time for prayer and fasting and repentance and everything? You are preparing yourself for a new season. Now the new season can be a new year or it can be the coming of the Lord. Am I making sense? Because we don't do these things because we, we just feel we want to be like the Jews. No. We have a deeper understanding of what we are doing. That's why we're different. It's been given unto me to understand them. I was born for this. It's been given unto me to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. I cannot even explain why I understand them. All I know is the spirit of God comes on me and makes me to understand them. So this is not your usual preaching. 
Well, so that's why it is not a usual knowledge that every pastor preaches because not everybody understands them. You are privileged to know them. Amen? Now, you have a star there called Capella. Now, Capella is not shown on my it's not shown on the screen, right? Capella is shown on the screen. Adjust your glasses. <laughs> Capella is on top there. <laughs> Capella, when you see the picture of a Capella, is a picture of a goat. Why? Because in the day of atonement, He's the escape God that carries our what? Our sins and iniquities and transgression. Who carried our sins and iniquities and transgression at Calvary? Jesus. Now, the next one is called Castor and Paulus. Do you see Castor and Paulus? Now, Castor and Paulus are called the Gemini. The Gemini means the twins. Now, Satan, not wanting people to know what Castor and Paulus actually means, decided to mimic it in Greek mythology as Zeus. It has nothing to do with Zeus. Castor and Paulus, one of them is brighter than the other. Castor and Paulus is a representation of the death and resurrection of Christ. Castor representing the death, so it doesn't shine well. And Paulus representing the resurrection, so it shines brighter. And both of them, that is why the totality of the gospel is about the death and what? And resurrection of Christ. Most preachers preach about the death of Christ. They don't talk about what? The resurrection of Christ. But that's half gospel. You need to talk about the death and what? And resurrection. Cast and Paulus represents that. So, beginning of every year, they gather like this to remind us what Jesus has done that he's coming back again. Now, put the next slide on the screen. Now, if you look on your screen, you will see a soldier. And the soldier has a shield. And he has a sword. And in the middle of the soldier, what is written there? Orion. They're coming back as forth as light. So, Orion is a group of stars. And they go to battle on behalf of the children of God. The stars can go to battle. We know that from the book of Judges, when the stars in their course, courses went to battle with Deborah. You remember that, that story? Yes. Orion is like a soldier. When you put the dot to dot of the stars, it's like a soldier. What's that telling you? You are not entering this year alone. There is an army in the heavenlies that can, work, can fight for your, on your behalf. Oh my God. There is a reserved army in heaven and in the heavens. In heaven, the angels. In the heavens, the stars. They can fight for you. But if you don't know, you don't know. You're just be walking there, ignorant, be talking about backlash, backlash. What backlash? When I know in the morning. So for example, in the morning, I go out to pray. And a witch show up. Or a demon show up. And wants to interrupt what I want to do. Very simple. I say, ah, where are the reserve armies of the Lord? Is it not the set time? Are you not in the sky? Arise, use your sword and your shield and fight on my behalf. I have better things to deal with. I, deal with them. May the Lord give you understanding. So, in this time we are praying and fasting, it's an opportune time for you to understand these things. Amen. 
Now, having understood the foundations, now let me put the roofing sheets and then we paint the building. What kind of year are we going to have? This year. Now, before I tell you about the year, all these 5780, 5780, what is the 5780s about? So I want you to put the next slide on the screen. The 570s, 5780s. Now, look on the screen. I try as much as possible by God's grace to get pictures that will help you to what? Understand. Now, year 5780 was 20 what? 2020. 5781, 2021. 5782. 2022. Now, there are a group of years. Now, the 5780s are called the years of the mouth. Pay. The word pay, there, point to pay. Pay is a Hebrew word. Okay? The word pay is about mouth. So, these years it is the years whereby you must open what your mouth and prophesy. So you will hear prophetic people telling you things like, open your mouth and declare. Open your mouth and declare. Well, the reason why they are able to tell you to open your mouth and declare is because of the season in which we are. But the Bible says, open your mouth and I'll do what? And I'll feel it. Do you understand? Now, it goes through that. Now, where we are is now five, seven, eight, what? Five. The year, hey, put the next slide on the screen. Next slide. Yes. Now, Every one of the Hebrew words, they have prophetic meanings in the letters. English words are not like that. So a Hebrew man can take a Hebrew Bible and can tell you what's going to happen in the year. Just like that. So for example, a few days ago, the world was saying that um, the crisis in the Middle East Lebanon and Israel, there should be a ceasefire for what? 21 what? 21 days, temporal ceasefire. When I heard that, I said, there will not be any ceasefire. Because I've already understood what's going to happen. There will not be ceasefire. Not at this time. Maybe later, but not this time. Because the rising planet in this time is the planet Mars. And the planet Mars is a red planet. And the red planet represent war, bloodshed. So I know the times and the seasons. So I don't get educated by CNN and BBC. You know, I was talking to a fellow brother yesterday, and he did not understand the crisis in the Middle East. He said, but, but it's because Israel is occupying the Palestinian land. They're taking the Palestinian lands. So I asked him a question. What is occupied land? He said, the, the occupied land is the Palestinian land. I said, what is it? Where is it? He could not explain. It is at that point, it hit him like a rock. That he actually does not understand what Palestinian territories or occupied land is about. He got his information from CNN. I said, let me, let me teach you. Occupy land. The West Bank is Jerusalem, Jericho, Bethlehem, Hebron. And then I asked him a question. If you are a Jewish man, would you accept that these lands are Palestinian lands? He stood there. 
He said, eh, I said, there's no, eh, would you accept or not? It was at that point, at that moment, he realized. He's not been studying his Bible. He's been listening to news. It's good to listen to the news, but you must have your understanding from what? From scripture and from history. Abraham paid for Hebron and buried his wife Sarah there. So when you tell a Jewish man that he must give that land to the Palestinians, it's an insult because as far as they are concerned, they cannot occupy a land that is already theirs. It's like somebody coming to tell you, you live in your house and somebody's telling you, you are occupying somebody's house. What, 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 what are you talking about? So it does not resonate with them. The world, the rest of the world can shout and make noise. As far as they are concerned, they are living on their land. Are you with me? And I pray any one of us do not make those errors. If you don't understand and you want more understanding, find, go on our website. I, there's a message I preach with pictures and with history. It's called Understanding the Conflict in Middle East. Pray for me because I want to release that message as a book to educate the church. Amen? May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Now, I want you to see the pictures there. You will notice the first picture is number what? Number five. The number five is a sign of the number what? The number five represent prophetically represent grace and favor. So the year, if you if you repair your altar and you walk with the Lord, you have grace and favor. Write it down. I'm decoding the year to you now. You will have grace and what? Grace and favor shall be yours in the name of Jesus. And Noah had what? Found what? Favor in the sight of God. May you find grace and favor in the sight of God this year. And the child Jesus grew in favor with the Lord and with man. And he grew in stature and wisdom. May that be your blessing in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you the blessings that will come. Now, Notice the second picture. The second picture is a man. And the man has his two hands raised upward unto what? Unto the Lord. It's an indication that it's a year that your help coming from where? From the Lord. It's a year that you must worship him. So those of you that don't like to raise up your hands. And humble yourself and ask for help from the Lord. This is a year that there is so many confusion and trouble will happen in the world. But while there's chaos, war, hardship, financial troubles, God has a reservoir. There's, there's, there's a reserved blessing for his own. Are you with me? Because our blessing comes from who? From the Lord. Now, the third picture indicates like it's a, a raking horn, fog. That raking fog means that the two halves, that it is a function that God will work on your behalf. He will work what? On your behalf. Now, the last two pictures indicate an open door. It's like a door has been opened. But if you look at the one called the book type, the last one, you will notice that it bends, the top of it bends like this, like a hand. And the Jews understand it that it is the year of the hand of the Lord. 
Now, let's go to scripture. That's what they understand. But what does the hand of the Lord indicate? And what must we do Just give me a moment. The hand of the Lord. I'm going to give a case study of someone who experienced the hand of the Lord. And who best, I mean, there are so many scriptures about the hand of the Lord. But the case study I want to look at is I'll look at the prophet Ezekiel. The prophet Ezekiel. And I wanted to open to the book the book of Ezekiel. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Go to the book of Ezekiel. Uh, good. And read Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 3. We've been, we've been looking at Ezekiel. So it's good for me to stay at Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 3. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 3. The word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzai, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chibar. And the hand of the Lord was there upon him. And the hand of the Lord was there what, upon me. In these few days of prayer and fasting, write it down. Be deliberate to ask the Lord that this year, he will put his hand upon you. You will not make decisions and regret that he will order your steps. The hand of the Lord will be upon you. Year 5785, that the hand of the Lord would what? Will be upon you. You will not buy shoes because people are buying shoes. You will not sell bread because people are selling bread. You will hear the Lord. And the word of the Lord came to me expressly now i wanted to put your name there and the word of the lord came expressly to stephen the priest the son of tutu in the land of barbados by the sea by the caribbean sea and the hand of the lord came upon him now open up your mic and begin to pray that scripture and say year 5785 oh lord let your hand be upon me. May I help me to hear your word. Help me to hear expressly for, from you what you want me to do. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. The hand of the Lord. The ha covet the hand of the Lord. Covet the hand of the Lord. The Lord to put his hand Oh my Lord, I come before you that your hand will be upon me in the name of Jesus. That will not be the same again. Kano Bakaziande, Lete Kodi Zoliana Mabe, Yande Kobras Katana Mabo, Ekande Bras Kotoliana Mabe, Yande Kuzu Zaliana Mabe, De Kosia, Pelete Konde Kobras Kotoliana Mabe, Melete Kosiana Messia, Parata Konde Kobras Katanebea, Mande Brasendo, and the Kabras Katana Mabo Koliana Mabe, Le Konde Katana Mabe, Mayande Kosine Mabe, Nese Kotoma Zene Mabe. in Jesus name we pray do not forget the year is a great a year of grace and what favor one two it is a year of the hand of the Lord 
I don't want you to forget these things. So that when you are praying for yourself and you're praying for your family, if you want to grow spiritually, you know what to pray about. Amen? That, Lord, grant me favor in your sight. Lord, grant me great grace to stand. And Lord, let your hand be what? Upon me. I go over again. Lord, grant me favor, Lord, in your sight. And grant me favor with people. Let the east, the west, the north, and the south. Let people favor me. In this year, let, the, let there be open doors because it's the year of hay let there be open doors for me and let your hand be upon me i'm going to give you a scripture deliberately that will help you to remember so the scripture is very simple 33 22 ezekiel 33 verse 22 go to ezekiel chapter 33 verse 22 ezekiel chapter 33 verse 22 now the hand of the Lord was upon me in the evening. Afore he that escaped came and had opened my mouth until he came to me in the morning and my mouth was opened and I was no more dumb. You'll not be, you'll be no more dumb. I say you'll be no more dumb. It's a year that you're not supposed to be dumb. It's a year of the mouth. Hello? It's a year of the mouth. You're not supposed to be dumb. Open your mouth and declare. Speak out what you want the Lord want to do for you. What you want to see change in your business. What you want to see change in your spiritual life. What you want to see change in your children's life. What you want to see change in your family. Open your mouth and prophesy. Read the scripture again. Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 22. Now the hand of the Lord was upon me. The hand the of the Lord was upon me in the evening. No, 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 I don't have time to talk about the evening. The evening is a time of oblation. It's a time of the altar. It is the time that there is an assigned angel for the evening. The angel of the evening is not the angel of the morning. Help me, Holy Ghost. Say, Pastor, what do you mean? Daniel was praying. In Daniel chapter 9. Guess what time the angel came? He came at the time of the evening oblation. Zechariah, in the book of Luke, was in the temple. At what time did the angel Gabriel come and tell him his wife Elizabeth will give birth? It was the time of the evening what? Oblation. At what time did he go to Mary and tell him you shall be with child? It was the time of the evening word oblation. At what time does the hand of the Lord come upon? It is the time of what? The evening oblation. Do you now understand that it is not just by error or just fancy that I have deliberately set up nine vigils throughout the feast times because there are visiting angels for these programs. If you like, sleep at home and snore. It's your own business. Because the hand of the Lord will come. And the angels assigned for that time and for that season will visit people and turn people's life. And in a moment, somebody's financial life will just completely change. Somebody's academic life will just completely change. Because the hand of the Lord shall come upon the life of people. We don't do programs. We hear the Lord. I don't personally, I don't like standing and say, the Lord told me, the Lord told me, the Lord told me. Because it's, it's has become like a joke. Where everybody say, the Lord said, the Lord said, the Lord said. I don't normally say that. I just say, this is what we're going to do. Let him that have understanding, have understand it. Let him that hear the spirit, that have ears, hear what the spirit what says. Simples. I keep everything simple. I wanted to read Ezekiel 33 verse 22 again. Now the hand of the Lord was upon me in the evening. Afore he that was escaped came and had opened my mouth until he came to me in the morning. And my mouth was opened and I was no more dumb. 
my mouth was open and I was no more dumb. If you've struggled to speak, not this year. I said, now what? Not this year. Now I want you to open your mouth and begin to pray and say, oh God, let your hand be upon me and let my mouth be open, my mouth be filled to prophesy. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. I want to hear your voice. Open up your microphones and begin to pray. And the Sunday Cobras Catoliana Mabe, Ecolia Salamandian and Cabrasquito, Saliate Colian and Hem, the other Cosina Mabe Cobrasco, oh God, put your hand upon me, tell me another man in 5785 2025, tell me into another man, and I will not preach the same way, and I will not teach the same way, tell me into another man, oh Lord, that I will be the man you want me to be that you are glorified in my life in the name of Jesus in Jesus name we pray now read it again Ezekiel 33 22 now the hand of the Lord was upon me in the evening afore he that was escaped came and had opened my mouth until he came to me in the morning, and my mouth was opened, and I was no more dumb. Now, when the hand of the Lord comes upon you, the next thing, write it down. It is the year of the Holy Spirit. Help me. Help me, Holy Ghost. It is the year of what? Of the Holy Spirit. Those of you that have not experienced the Holy Spirit in greater dimension, this is your year. This is your year. In these three night vigils, the power of the Holy Spirit will come so strongly upon the people's life that you will not struggle to study the Bible. You will not struggle to understand the things of God. Because it is his year. It is the year of the Holy Spirit. So how do you know that? Even in the Hebrew letters, there's a letter there called Hey, H-E-I. And Hey means the breath of God. Now, when did the breath of God come into man? The Bible says, God said, let us create man in our own image and war. And, like, and God breathed into man, man became a living soul. It, was, it is by the breath of God that man became a living soul. And the breath of God is the Holy Spirit. That is why, have you noticed? I know some of you don't ask questions. Me, I do. Have you noticed that when Apostle of Odile comes, he will say, anoint your breath anoint your ear what are you anointing your breath for because the first time the spirit of god came into you where did he enter he entered into your nostril your breath your breath so he said anoint your breath what he's trying to do is a prophetic action to say let the holy spirit come upon me afresh like it was in the time of the garden of eden may god give you understanding now it is put it there for me put it there for me quickly the river is flowing and i want to i want to bring it out lando broskete kosia na mehendia parandia zuzeleme dobrosketoleme cabra katone now now this is what i'm talking about this is the letter hey an open window and then it's bent, the leaf is bent like a hand. And yod and the leaf is open. Open your mouth and I'll hold, and I'll hold. I will feel it. They, are, they all carry what? Prophetic word, messages. And they say, I was no more dumb. You will not be dumb this year. Those of you that when you want to open your mouth and share the gospel with somebody, your mouth will be doing you will no more do you will speak the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Those of you that in the volume of the book written concerning you, you are meant to prophesy. 
but you are scared. But if I start to prophesy, what if I get it wrong? And the thing is sitting inside you. This year, it will move from dormancy to activity. It will come out of you in the name of Jesus. The breath of God. Now, I want to give you a scripture that will help you to remember. So, let's go to Ezekiel 2.2. 2. So, I did it Ezekiel 1.33.22. They are not lottery numbers. I repeat, they are not lottery numbers. Amen? Ezekiel 33.22. And I'm giving you Ezekiel 2.2. 2, but let's start from verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 2. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. Stand upon thy feet, and I'll speak unto thee. This year, we will not just roll on the ground. We will stand on our feet and hear the Lord. Amen? Amen? And hear the Lord. Read verse 2. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet. That I heard him that speak unto me. You know, one, the hand of the Lord shall be upon you. Two, the breath of God shall come upon you. But not only shall he come upon you, he shall enter you. Aliande koma lebro. Ikoli mando sotolia tekaya. Pakatu se ine mende bros kotolia taika. And dobroski teleko su zayande. Begin to pray. Lift up your voice and pray and say, Oh God, fill me with your spirit in a different dimension I have not known. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. And the kobroski telehe. Azonde kana mahande. Marati katuze. Ezende bras kotoliande. Arando su se lemedia. the <laughs> now in the few minutes that we have i want to show you that the hand of the lord that is coming is us write this down the hand of the lord that's going to come upon you is is also called the blessing of joseph by holy ghost help them to understand that this year is the blessing of joseph and the blessing of joseph is the blessing of ephraim and manasseh and i'm going to show you in scripture how the blessing of joseph tie in into the hand of the lord and the breath of god and the favor of god all in one then i will end it go to genesis chapter 49 read from verse 22 Genesis chapter 49 from verse 22. Joseph is a fruitful bow. Even a fruitful bow by a well. You, you are by the well. This year you will not dry up in the name of Jesus. Amen. I said this year you will not dry up in the name of Jesus. Amen. Keep reading. Whose branches run over the wall. The archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him but his bow 
his bow abode in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong. Pause. No weapon formed against you shall hold, shall prosper. They, they will throw the ashes out. You can't stop them from fighting. You can't stop them from shooting at you. But it will not work. Hello? It will not work. The ashes have surely what grieved him and shot at him and hated him and his bow abode in strength. You will abode in strength. You will abide in strength. Hello? You will what? Abide what? In strength. Now, now, read 24. But his bow abode in strength. Why? And the arms of his hands were made strong. How? Now, number one, why? Number two, how? Why would he abode in strength? And say the arms of his hands were made strong. And my question is, how will his hands be made strong? How come your hands will be made what? Will, made, will be made strong. Now read. By the hands of the mighty God in of the Jacob. Libra satire. By the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. That is why it is a year of the hand of the Lord. When the mighty hand of Jacob shall be upon you, no Esau shall destroy your life. I say no Esau shall destroy. The Edomites shall not find you. The covenant of the Edomites shall not consume you. Because the hand of the Lord, the mighty hand of Jacob shall be upon you. Read. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Who is the shepherd? The shepherd is Christ. Who is the shepherd? The shepherd is Christ Jesus. Who is the stone of Israel? The cornerstone. Who is the cornerstone? The the stone is Christ Jesus, the rock that they drank water from. The rock is Christ Jesus. The rock is Christ Jesus. The rock is Christ Jesus. Now that's better. Read verse 24. I'm getting excited. Read verse 24 again. But his bow abode in strength, uh -huh. and the arms of his hands were no, no, made. No, 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 start again, start again, read it again. But his bow abode in strength. You will abide in strength in the name of Jesus. Now, how would you abide in strength? And the arms of his hands were made strong. How would your hands be made strong? By the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. And then the answer comes. By the hands of the mighty God of Jacob, which shall come upon you in the manner of Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 22, the hand of the Lord shall come upon you and your mouth shall be open and your mouth shall be filled and everything you declare in this time and in this season that the Lord shall bring it to pass that the declaration of your word and the words that shall come from out of your mouth and as you stay at the altar in the place of prayer and walk in the ways of the Lord. It is a year of your untold breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Read. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. You are not alone. The shepherd shall be with you. Behold, I am with you always to the end of the world. I am with you always to the end of the world. The stone that the builders have rejected. But this morning, we shall not reject the stone. We shall embrace the stone. The stone is Christ Jesus. Read on, verse 25. Even by the God of thy father, uh -huh. who shall help thee. The Lord shall help you. Are you weak? Do you, does it feel, life feels like you have no helpers? I tell you, year 5785, by understanding and by revelation, the Lord shall help you. I said the Lord shall help you in Jesus' name. The Lord shall help you. Say, Pastor, I'm weak. You, he, his strength is made perfect in your weakness. The Lord shall help you in the name of Jesus. Read. And by the Almighty, who shall bless thee. Alemendo. The Lord Almighty, the Father of spirits, the Father of life, shall bless thee. How? How are you going to bless me? Read. Kandobras kotoliana mehendea. Ikobras ketelizuzandiana mehendea. 
with blessings of heaven above with the blessings of heaven above there is a blessing that is assigned in heaven that your name is attached to it that has not come down this year you pray down you prophesy down it shall come from heaven upon you in the name of jesus read blessings of the deep that lieth under. under there is a blessing that's hidden in the deep underneath the earth every blessing that's hidden there Gold, silver, diamond made the people from the east in the same way and manner that the people of the east came looking for baby Jesus. And the Bible says they gave him gold because he was king. Father, I pray for anyone that started business and is wondering where shall my help come from? Your help shall come from the Lord. And I prophesy to you that your help shall come from the deep. And it shall come from the deep. May gold, may people come from the east and give you gold and silver and substance that you shall be able to fulfill the volume of the book that is written concerning you. Read. Blessings of the breast and of the womb. You can know. Palibros ketenia. Blessings of the breast. Blessings of the receipt. What, 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 what is that one? Do you know that when you were conceived in your mother's womb, God put a blessing in your mother's breast that when you started breastfeeding, you were supposed to tap that breast. That blessing from the mother's breast. That is why a woman saw Jesus and he said, Ah, blessed is the, is the womb that gave back to you and the, and the breast that you suck. Because there is blessing inside the breast. Ah, I prophesy and I speak for every blessing God put in your mother's womb and the breast of your mother that because of the ignorance of your mother you were not able to tap into that blessing. Today I stand as a priest and I stand as a prophetic voice and I prophesy that the years that the canker worm have eaten the years that the, the, the caterpillars and the, and, the, and the worms have eaten. Now I speak forth that the locusts have eaten yande cobra skitele men dobra skata are you not the God of yesterday, today, and forever? Are you not the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega? Are you not eternity? Therefore, I go into eternity and I pull it forth and I say, everyone that did not have a good time with the mother, everyone that did not have a good time in childhood, by way of the prophetic, I pull that the blessing of the breath shall come upon your life in the name of Jesus. Read. The blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitor. The blessings of thy father. There is a blessing God put in your father. Whether your father looked after you or did not look after you. Whether he meant evil for you or not. Today, I stand as a father and I declare in the way and the manner of fathers and I say, let the blessing of fathers come upon your tabernacle in the name of Jesus. Let everything that was written concerning the volume of the book, concerning your life and your destiny be activated this morning in the name of Jesus. Read. Unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills, they shall be on the head of Joseph. They shall be the head of you. Read. And on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brethren. And on the crown. On the head of him that was separated from his brethren. Are you having a hard time in your family? Your family sees you that you the odd one. Have your family rejected you because they don't see your future? I've got good news for you. There's nothing to cry about because the blessing of, of, of Joseph is coming upon you. That is the year we are talking about. The year 57185. Now, 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 go to Deuteronomy chapter 33. Deuteronomy chapter 33. Now, I'm going to show you why I began to talk about the sun, the moon, the stars. And why I showed you the sun, the moon, and the stars is all going to make sense to you. What kind of year we are entering? The year 5785. Now, read Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 33, from 13. And of Joseph, he said, Blessed of the Lord be his land. Yes. For the precious things of heaven. Yes. For the Jew and for the deep that croucheth beneath. You will have the blessings of heaven, the blessings of Jew, the blessings of the deep. 
cutcheth beneath that the, the, the deep underneath the earth. Now, 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 listen to me. Do you know you can take this scripture in the early mornings and go and stand under the dew and say, in the same manner, this dew is falling upon my head. So do I prophesy the scripture over my life that the blessing of the dew that is assigned for my life will come upon my life and it will come to pass. It is a year of opening your mouth. It is a year of acting the word of God out. Now, now, verse 14. And for the precious fruits brought forth by the sun, and for the precious things put forth by the moon. Ha! Do you see that? No, no, no. We didn't get it. Read it again. We didn't get it. And for the precious fruits brought forth by the sun, and for the precious things put forth by the moon. Really? I didn't know that the sun brought forth fruit and the moon brought forth precious what? Things. You know, the only one you know is the sun shall not smite me and the moon shall not hurt me. I am giving you a different dimension. Stop looking at things only in the negative. Look at things in its totality. The sun does not only smite you and the moon does not only hurt you. The sun also can bring you what? Precious what? It can bring you what? Precious fruit. I prophesy over your life that in this year 5785 five, that precious fruits you will bring forth in the name of Jesus. In in the same way that the plant understands and absorbs sunlight for photosynthesis and bring forth fruit, I declare unto you that every hidden blessing that the sun carries, that you as a child of the kingdom, you as a daughter of the most high, shall have the precious fruits of the sun in the name of Jesus. And you shall receive the precious things put forth by the moon. Do you now understand why occultic people know that the moon brings things forth? And the church sits there, not knowing anything. I pray that the blessing and the precious things that the moon, every month there is new moon and there is full moon, now you take new moon and full moon seriously. That is new moon and full moon. Let the fullness of whatever blessing it carries comes over your life in the name of Jesus. And remember, you don't have to wait for the whole year to declare it. You can do all the blessings well every month because the moon goes through all of them well in 30 days. What a mystery. Read on. And 15. for the chief things of the ancient mountains. Hayando, and for the precious pause, things. Pause, pause. For the precious things, uh, for the chief things of the ancient mountains. He's not talking about mountain Everest. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about deep prophetic things that are hidden from the beginning. Deep things that as you read scripture, the spirit of God will come upon you. The angels of the Lord will come. They will begin to teach you the word of God. And you will begin to find mysteries right in the same Bible you are holding. That you are, you are blind to. Ancient mountains. Ancient depths in the Bible. Not in another book. In, in the Bible. I pray this year 5785. That the heavens will be open unto you. That the windows will be open unto you. Come up hither. Come up hither. And I will show you great and mighty things which thou have not known. In the manner of Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, I pray that you will come up hither, you will come up higher to experience the mysteries of the kingdom of God, that you will not be a baby, but you will become a weapon in the hands of the living God in Jesus' name. Read. And for the chief things of the ancient mountains, and for the precious things of the lasting hills, yes. and for the precious things of the earth, and fullness thereof. Pause. When everybody says, hey, the world has become difficult, don't join them. Things are hard, don't join them. The earth is a being. And the Bible says, I've taught on the earth. You know these things. And I said, it said, and for the precious things of the earth and the fullness thereof, begin to prophesy and say, ah, O ye earth, where are the precious things and the fullness of the earth that has been hidden from eternity that I don't know of? Cause the inhabitants of the land to bring me favor. Cause the inhabitants of the land. Was it not thus God took and made and formed man? Ah, my God. 
the dust in my office, let them favor me. The dust in business, let them favor me. In the Kumasia, Talibros, Katoliande, in the Kubras, Kato, you begin to prophesy and you begin to make declaration. It is not a year to close your mouth. That's why the hand of the Lord has come upon you, that you will not be dumb. You will not be dumb in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Read on. And for the goodwill of him that dwelt in the bush, let the blessing come upon the head of Joseph. Ha, the blessing will be where? On the head of Joseph. That's why in this vigil, your head will be anointed. I say your head will be anointed with fresh oil. Your head will be anointed with what? Fresh oil. So the ushers you have had. I want fresh oil. I don't want the old oil. Which means you must buy a fresh bottle of olive oil that has never been opened because it's a new season and we are going to do a new thing to equip the children of God to walk under favor and to walk under the blessing and the dew of Joseph. Read. And upon the top of the head of him that was separated from his brethren. Come out from among them and be ye what? Separate. And I will be a father unto you, and you shall be what? My son and daughters. This year is separation unto holiness. It's not a doctrine this year. It is a prophetic message. If you want to have the blessing of Joseph, you deliberately separate yourself from sin. Amen? You, you sh your language should be, how can I do such a wicked thing against my God? You should have the language of Joseph. You should live a holy life when nobody is around. Hey, young Joseph, a teenager, was able to live a holy life. He had no Bible. He had no pastor. He had no, there was no pastor. There was no Bible. He had no apostle. He had no prophet. He had no teacher. He had no tract. He had no nothing. There was no radio station. There was no morning glory. There was no Bible study. And that young man stood in the midst of witchcraft. You have no excuse. You have the Bible. You have morning glory. You have teachings. You have everything. You can stand. Come out from among them and be ye separate. His grace is sufficient for you to stand. His grace is one. It's sufficient for you to stand. For the grace of God has appeared unto us. Teaching us to deny ungodliness and worthy love. That we should live soberly and godly and, and righteously in this present world. It is possible. Why? Why is it possible? He, by his grace. By his grace. Grace is the enablement of God for you to do things that you cannot do. Grace is the enablement of God for you to live the life of Christ that you cannot live. Are you with me? Grace is not a license to lasciviousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I want you to open up your mind. I end here. Now lift up your voice and begin to thank the Lord. Begin to thank the Lord. Now before we pray, lastly I want to tell you this. Everything I have showed you is for the children of God. I repeat, these things I've showed you is for who? The children of God. Their world is going to enter into chaos. The wars are going to increase oil prices. And it will cause all kinds of trouble. And economic upheaval. In the midst of those economic upheaval, do not look to the economy for your sustenance. My God shall supply all your needs according to the riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Are you with me? Now, I've shown you how it works. Now, what you have to do in these few days before Rosh Hashanah is write the things you want the Lord to do for you. Open your mouth and begin to prophesy. While you are repenting and say, Lord, cleanse me, purify me, separate me. In the great house are many vessels, some to honor and some to what? Dishonor. I want to be honorable this year. Lord, set me apart. While you pray that prayer, also do not forget to make a list of the things you want to see the Lord do what in your life. Way before Rosh Hashanah. Amen? Begin to pray over your life and over your family. Amen? Then, remember, trouble will increase in the world. Everything I've preached this morning has nothing to do with the world. It's, it's only got to do with the kingdom of God. Amen? So, the world will be in an upheaval. Do not join your mouth. Remember your mouth is what? Is a weapon. Don't put your mouth and say, hey, things are hard. It will be hard for you. Do not prophesy negative word over your life. There's trouble. There's this. There's that. Your covenant is different. 
That's why in this time, be deliberate. Those of you that are business, be deliberate. Take an offering. The witches and wizards are doing covenants over their businesses. God is a covenant-keeping God. He respects covenant. What is your own covenant over that business? What's your own covenant over, over, over that education you want to pursue? What's your own covenant over that ministry you want to pursue? Do that. That's between your, on your God. And take time. I didn't get time to go to Genesis to show you that when when um, please pardon me. Let me show you. Let, let, me, let me show you. It, 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 will, it will bless your heart. Because when Noah built the ark, God came and he did something. that I, I, I want to show you. God did something. In the broskele hende. Holy Spirit, open our eyes. Go to Genesis chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9. I wanted to read from verse 8. Genesis chapter 9, verse 8. Genesis, Please be patient and hear. Genesis chapter 9 from verse 8. And God spake unto Noah. And God spake unto Noah. And to his sons with him, saying. Yes. And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you. And with your seed after you. Boss. Now, in chapter 8, I dealt with it last, last, last week. Chapter 8, he raised an altar. Chapter 9, God came and made a covenant with him. That is why you need an altar. You raise an altar, a sacrifice, and what? He had an altar, and then he put a sacrifice on it, and God came to make a covenant with him. When God wanted to deliver us from sin, what did he do? He raised an altar called a cross. He put a sacrifice on the altar called Jesus Christ, his son. And then by that, he made a covenant called a new, new covenant. Sealed with the blood. And what did he do? We became the fruit of the covenant. Follow the way of God. Don't listen to all these people jumping, young boys jumping over social media and making noise about things they don't understand. It is the way of the Lord. Both in the old and what? The New Testament, I showed you, if God the Father had to have an altar, put a sacrifice on the altar, made a covenant for me to be born again, follow that pattern for your business, for your life, for everything, and the Lord will bless you. Keep reading. And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. And with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you. Hey, Holy From Ghost. Pause, 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 pause. Do you know what God did here? He made a covenant with, and then including all the living creatures that were what? That were with what? With Noah. Do you understand? I don't have time to go into that. But in Hosea, what it meant was, he made a covenant with he made a covenant between Noah and the animals. That the animals will not hurt him like it was Adam. Now, I prophesy to you that go and study this scripture in detail and let the spirit of God open your eye. Any man or woman that take a fowl, take a beast and uses the beast's blood to do witchcraft against you, it shall not prosper. Amen? I will expand on this during the vigils. Keep reading. From all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. Yes. And I will establish my covenant with you. I will establish my covenant with you, yes. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Uh -huh. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. Uh -huh. And God said, this is the token of the covenant which I made between me and you yes. and every living creature that is with you yes. for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the rain. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant and between bro, me and the earth. Yeah. Boss, this is how the rainbow came to be. The rainbow is not for um, what do you call it? So-called inclusion, and it is not for them. It's Satan trying to. Make sure that the children of God will have nothing to do with the rainbow. The rainbow covenant is to make you that what Adam was not able to fulfill, you will fulfill. Do you know God told Noah, the same thing he told Adam, be fruitful and what? 
and multiply and replenish the earth. That's what we are supposed to do in this year. Amen. Amen. That's what we are supposed to do in this year. I will stop here. I will stop here. Not because I've finished. But I'll continue in, in the days to come. When the Spirit of God allows me to show more scriptures concerning this. But I want us to open our microphones and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Lift up. Thank God Hallelujah. for what He's going to do in our lives. Praise the Lord. Now, remember our vigil days. The 4th of October, the 11th of October, and the 18th of October. They are all power night vigils. That the hand of the Lord and the Spirit of God and the angels assigned to 5785 will be with us. Be expectant. Prepare your heart and come to receive from the Lord. Amen? And don't be selfish. Invite somebody to come. Amen? And don't stay online. I, those of you that are online in other countries, we'll do our best to bless you. But if you are in Barbados, there's no reason to stay online. People go to nightclubs. You will survive. Amen? In fact, one of the vigils, I'll finish the vigils, and in the day on Saturday, I have a wedding too. There are no excuses. We will get it done. Amen? We're going for full truth so that when things begin to happen all over the world, yeah, you'll be relaxed. You'll remind God of his promises and his covenant and you'll go to bed in peace. You will not be stressed. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Also, please be reminded that um, from the 2nd of October, it's mandate. It's mandate We'll be having programs for um, 5785. And I'm going to be speaking on East Monday. And I'm going to be speaking on 5785. The thing about it is, when I speak on this generation, God gives me a different way to speak it. And when I speak on East Monday, God gives me other things to speak about. So I don't know what he will do. So do not miss it. And there are other speakers on the platform that are going to bring another dimension of 57185. I showed you what it's going to do for us. Another preacher will show us. Remember that the gospel have different faces. The ox, the eagle, the lion, and the man. So let's join and find the other faces and get the full vision. Amen? Praise the Lord. Tonight, 
there is prayer. 7 o'clock. Join us. We pray and we seek the face of God. Courage will not kill you. Courage will help you in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, if the Lord leads you, please support us to take us to the next level. In 5785, I don't want to be on Zoom and YouTube. I want to be on Zoom, YouTube, Vimo, TikTok, Snapchat. I want to be everywhere. Short clips, whatever. And I've got a young man that is excited to do that work. Every technology we need, software we need, that will help us, please, so into this ministry. We don't charge you to join Morning Glory. This kind of knowledge, some people will charge you an arm and a leg. We're not charging you anything. So support us bountifully that we will be able to be ahead. You see, in a message like this, by the time October 29th, 30th, 31st come, and people are doing their witchcraft Halloween thing, you will yawn because you are ahead of them. Amen? I say you are what? You are ahead of them. You are just saying, say, I shut down witchcraft. I shut down the moon. And the moon will say, yes, you have authority to shut this down because you made covenant in the right time and in the right season. Are you with me? May the Lord give you understanding. Amen. Now, I will ask that if you have any questions, please, anything I said that you did not understand, please feel free to ask. It is a school of the Spirit. Ask questions and then get understanding. Amen. Zoom, you can raise up your hand and ask your question. And on YouTube, you can also um, test, paste your question. It will be relayed to me and I will answer your question. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I cannot see any hand on Zoom and I've not received any message from YouTube, which means that you have clearly understood the message that I was able, to, by the grace of God, to break down why the feast of the Lord, why the times and the seasons, why we do what we do, so that you'll not be confused, you'll have understanding, and if somebody asks you a question, you'll be able to, un you'll be able to answer them scripturally and biblically. Thank you. Since there are no questions, I will ask that we open our minds and we begin to thank the Lord. Shall we lift up our voice and bless the name of the Lord? Thank you for loving us in Jesus name Father we thank you we bless you we exalt your name for such a wonderful time Lord I pray that living testimonies will come out of this teaching by next week by next week living testimonies of a turnaround in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Please stay tuned for the announcement. And also, I want to encourage 
all the remaining 43 people, um, remaining 42 people, remaining people, 36 people on Zoom, please go to YouTube. Those of you on YouTube, like the video. And if you have not subscribed, please subscribe to the video so that the message will be broadcast all over and um, technical team there is a way on youtube that you can replay message as if it's live one program and i want this message throughout the week to be replayed so that people that people all over the world can have access to it and will be listening to it like it's a live program find out how it is done and let it be done god bless you stay tuned for the announcements. I'm not wasting time calling up is rising. They shall be filled, they shall be filled. Our Father is not a scammer. Our lover is not a scammer. If we are thirsty, we will be filled. My God. Ready for your life to change? Yeah. 